IUPAC isn't the only method to give the location of functional groups in a molecule. An older method uses Greek letters. Now this may well be adding to your current confusion, but the Greek method is still used today in conjunction with the IUPAC approach. And with certain molecules, it's quite common. So by explaining it, I hope you won't be totally confused should you come across an alpha, beta, gamma, or delta when a molecule is described to you. The Greek letter method is instead of Arabic numerals. First, we identify the initial group, for example, a carbonyl. Now, the first carbon from this group is alpha. The second carbon from this group is beta carbon. The third carbon from this group is gamma carbon, whilst the fourth carbon from this group is delta. Epsilon is next, but extremely uncommonly used. Where there are two directions that can be taken from the group, as in this case, one path is alpha, beta, gamma, delta, whilst the other is prime, so alpha prime, beta prime, gamma prime, and delta prime. It doesn't matter which path is prime and which is not. So let's look at some examples. Here we seek to describe where the hydroxyl group is in relation to the ketone's carbonyl. Well, it's on the alpha carbon to the carbonyl. So the locational relationship is alpha hydroxy ketone. In the next example, we have moved the alcohol one carbon further away from the ketone. So the alcoholic carbon is beta carbon. So we describe this arrangement of ketone and alcohol as beta hydroxy ketone. Continuing on, the alcohol is now an additional carbon from the ketone at the gamma position. So this is gamma hydroxy ketone. And finally, a last movement at the alcohol, one more carbon away from the ketone, thus providing a delta hydroxy ketone. This strategy of describing molecules is commonly applied to a number of functional groups. Another frequently used is indicating the location of an alkene to a ketone. Here we see that the alkene is located at carbons alpha and beta relative to the ketone. The alkene carbons do not have a maximum number of atoms attached, saturated, that we would find with a tetrahedral sp3 carbon, if you will. Thus, the alkene is described as unsaturated. So this arrangement is an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. When double bonds are separated by a single bond, as in this case, it is conjugated and has some distinct properties as a result. Such a conjugated ketone alkene system is also commonly called an enone. Alpha beta unsaturated ketone and enone today are commonly interchangeable in their usage, so it's useful to be at least aware of both nomenclatures. Now, if we move the alkene two carbons further away from the ketone, the arrangement would be described as a gamma delta unsaturated ketone. Where there is an ester, the ketone's location is described relative to the ester. In this case, the ketone's carbon is at the beta carbon relative to the ester's carbonyl carbon. Thus, we call this system beta keto ester. The alkoxy carbon of the ester is not marked as alpha, as it's part of the ester functional group. Thus far, this strategy has been applied to indicate the location of one functional group relative to another. However, it can be used to indicate the size of a ring 
with just one functional group. Now, with rings, we wish to determine the carbon furthest from the carbon of the functional group. In this example, with a cyclic ester known as a lactone, it's the gamma carbon that's furthest from the carbonyl carbon. So the system is described as a gamma lactone. In this next situation of a larger ring, the carbon furthest from the carbonyl carbon is the delta carbon. So the system is delta lactone. It's all well and good saying la 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 la. It's not IUPAC. IUPAC seems like a good idea. So why should I learn this? It's because people still use it. What about this four-membered cyclic amide system? Well, it's important because a class of antibiotics are based upon its structure including penicillin. A bacteria becomes penicillin resistant by making an enzyme that breaks the bond between the nitrogen and the carbonyl carbon of this ring to form a compound that's inactive to the bacteria. Now, what is this enzyme called? The IUPAC name for the four-membered cyclic amide is azetidine 2 ohn now, is the enzyme called azetidine-2-NAs? No. If you called it that to a biochemist, I think they might faint from shock. Despite the distinctly un iupac smell about it, the enzyme is called beta-lactamase. It's fickle as to whether chemists use Greek or Arabic numbering as it were. It's a good guide that where the system is more common, the Greek method is more likely to be used by some chemists. You may use the Greek method in the main text of a scientific paper, for example, but would not use it when naming a molecule in the experimental section of the scientific paper.